Hello and welcome to Richard's Home Mechanics and thank you for visiting my channel. Right, behind me here is my own personal Honda CBF125 on a 59 plate. Um, picked this bike up, oh, I've had it about four years now. Um, it had a seized engine on it, um, did some work on it. Um, what do I have to do? Yeah, I had to, the engine was completely seized up on the top end. I had to cut the piston out, I think cut the piston in half. I had to heat the gudgeon pin out to get that out. Uh, when I rebuilt it, I put new pistons, new gudgeon pin, new cam chain, new valve guide. We took the valves out, if I remember. We reground the valves and we put new valve seals, etc, etc. So basically, this is my little commuter. Um, it's got high mileage now. I think it's up to about 37, 38,000 miles, which is quite high for a little 125. But, you know, if you look after them, they'll keep going. You know, it's, it's what I say a lot on my channels. If you don't look after your vehicles, they will let you down when most inconvenient to you. So just remember, keep them serviced, look after them. Anyway, back to the job in, uh, in hand. Um, been busy working on my own cars. Um, I've had three MOTs, so I've had wishbones to do, uh, track rod ends, drop links, you name it, they needed it. So I've spent a lot of time away from the video. Unfortunately, I couldn't do videos on these because I needed to get these done quickly because they're, 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 they're our daily runners. And we're back on the video now. Now, this bike has just come back from MOT a couple of weeks ago, my personal bike, and I hadn't had the time to look at it. I just threw it in for MOT like I normally do, and whatever needs doing, if it fails, I do it, or if it passes, jobs are good. And um, It was picked up on an advisory that the uh, front brake is binding. Now, I had a feeling that the pads were well down here because you know I use it every day, and it, it is used quite, quite hard, you know? Um, so what we do, We'll nip down to the bike now and actually have a look, spin the wheel round, and then it looks like we're going to have to take the caliper off. Uh, maybe the little pins that slide on the caliper uh, will need degreasing up. Um, I've already pre purchased a set of brake pads, they're not top quality, but it's a cheap bike anyway, so I'm not going to throw a load of money at it. Um, so let's get down there and have a look and just see what's actually going on with this caliper. All right, we're back at the bike now. Let's have a quick look. Now, I've noticed the disc is definitely. A little bit worn down. That should possibly need re-skimming but I think we can get away with that. It's what you don't want is you don't want a big lip on here and we're talking probably half a mil lip there so that's fine. If we had a big ridge there, say this was this was countersunk there and you had a lip here, uh, this brake disc uh, would possibly need re-skimming but they're so thin anyway I think you just have to replace it you know possibly a second hand one or a new one. But anyway, back to the job in hand. Now the, the uh, MOT inspector said the front brake is binding. Now I had a feeling it was, so let's just prove it. Now I'm gonna give it a bit of a spin. Look at that. Now what that's gonna cause is two things. That's gonna wear the brake pads out drastically quickly, which I think it has, because I think only these pads are only a year old. I think I put them on on the last MOT. So we've obviously got an issue there with this caliper. Um, it's going to create heat and when brakes get hot, discs get hot and pads get hot, you lose the efficiency of the brake. Hence, um, when you have a racing car or a racing bike, while you have vents, keep these cooler, the brakes work better. So it looks like we're going to have to um, take this brake caliper off. Um, what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to give it a quick clean because the last thing I want is any of this dirt, road grit, getting inside. Um, the brake caliper it doesn't take much to um, you know to cause a problem with them um, yeah looking good though so what we do then I'm gonna go and get me toolbox uh, one thing to remember when you're taking a brake caliper off is when you take this off obviously there's pistons inside which push out like so if you've got the pad like that the pistons push the pads out onto the disc and as the pads get thinner and thinner and thinner the pistons come out more and more and more um, hence why you know when you're, a good clue is when your brake pads are quite low or, the, or you've got an issue on your front wheel is you'll start topping up the reservoir on the top. All of a sudden you'll see it dropping. But what's happening, the liquid's coming down and it's been filled behind these pots. So what's going to happen is when we actually take this off and I'll go through what I'm going to do, we're going to push these pistons or these pots back into this brake caliper. And what that's going to create, because I've topped up the master cylinder or the reservoir for the brake fillet cylinder up there, it's going to 
if I don't take the top off, it's going to pressurise it. So what I need to do is release the top when we get to that stage, put loads of rag around it, because when I pull these pots round or push these pots back in, which you'll see in a little while, the liquid's going to pump out there. And if you don't put cloths, and brake fluid is not very good for paintwork. So further ado, let's get the toolboxes out and let's start getting this brake caliper off. Right, let's crack off this brake caliper. Quite tight. That's it. Been on here a while, so I expect them to be quite tight. Now, once I've got these um, couple of bolts out, I reckon we'll have to tap this to get it off. I don't think it's going to come off straight away because I think it's going to be stuck on here, but we'll find out in a minute. So what I'm doing now is I'm just releasing or taking off the main bolts that hold the brake caliper to the actual leg here. Now I'm not sure if this is going to come off or it's going to need a tap. Nope, might be lucky. No, nope, she's on there. So I'm going to have to give it a little tap. And if you tap these, a rubber mallet, not a metal one. Because it won't a rubber against metal obviously won't hurt it. But if you put metal against metal, it will damage it. She's on there. See how tight that is? No wonder that was rubbing. Right, I think we might have to make that off. She's definitely on there tight. Here we go. There you go. Didn't want that to fall out. Here we go. Cool. Look at them pads look. Now you see how tight that was? Just remember, use a rubber mallet, not a metal one, because you'll damage it. Now them brake pads are absolutely had it. Look, there's no meat on them at all. No wonder. It's just literally, I caught this just in time. It's just coming down to the metal. So, let's have a look how this comes apart. That sits in there. So that goes like that. Looks like I've got to undo that to release that. Bear with me. I'll come back in a minute. We just get some more spanners. Right. Right, I just want to show you what I'm doing because there's people who are going to be doing this at home and want to see how, I, how I'm going to be doing this. So this is the brake assembly as it comes off. Look, I've took it off as one unit. Important clock how these brake pads go in. Yeah? Now it looks like we have got a locating bolt here that holds these brake pads in position at the bottom and the other two just slide and lock in. So what we're going to do, we're going to nip this little bolt off here. See this bolt here that goes straight through all the way through to the other side. So we can't get these brake pads out until we've undone that. So let's undo that first. But I'd like to show what I'm doing in case you want to do this yourself if you've got a little Honda. Right. <coughs> Here we go. Now I'm just undoing that. So you can see that bolt goes all the way through to the other side and that's holding these pads in. So these pads are not going anywhere until I've taken this bolt out. Now what I want to do, I want to take these pads out and lay them down on the floor as they go back in. Right, so that's the little pin lot. That there holds the brake pads in. See? Now these brake pads should just come out. Now if we reassemble this caliper the same side or the same way it is so on this side this is the near side brake pad so that comes out look at that there ain't a lot of meat on that is there and you see the little locating hole in the bottom where that little bolt just went through so we'll put that like that and this other brake pad see that it's got a little locating so you push it in like that it locates onto there that goes in there, put the other pad and the bolt goes through there. So that's quite simple. So now we've actually released the brake pads. And let's have a look at these. Not a lot of meat on them. That's the importance of checking your brakes. That could let you down seriously when you most need it. There we go. So they're rubbish. Okay. 
so we know that went like that and that goes like that right so what i'm going to do now i'm going to get some more tools and we'll be straight back right here we go i think i might have found the problem why these brakes were sticking this little plate here when you put the brakes on it pushes out or it goes that way now this was solid i could not move that i even put a pry bar in there but i've oiled it let's see if we get it out now this is stuck this bit's stuck been careful not to damage anything here we go might be able to manhandle it now here we go see that that should be all clean that there should slide in and out freely and it's not you can see that's stuck so if you ever do one of these honda cbf's i think this needs to be something that you need to take out so what we'll do leave that for a minute we're cracking on i'm going to give these pistons a clean these pistons see how far the pistons have come out that shows how far the brakes have worn down so i'm going to give these a quick clean I'll go and get some materials and we'll be straight back on that and we'll give it a quick clean and then what we're going to do, we're going to use a bit of wood or a G-cramp and push these back into their position. But before we do that, we must make sure that we open the reservoir up the top. Okay, so as I said before, I'm just going to take the reservoir off cap. This is where the brake fluid goes. So when we push them pistons back, we want the liquid to be able to escape. Let's just put this over here. And there you go what i've done i'm not going to take the top of the seal off there that can stay there um i've put rag round there so basically when we um push the pistons back down there on the brake caliper if there's any liquid wants to escape it'll just drip round there so you must do that i was uh, you could pop a seal right here's the pistons now while we've got this open like this we're we're looking for damage now there's a little bit of scratching on these pistons they're not the best of pistons but we're not talking about a race bike here either so this is all right now i'll give it a quick clean what i've done i've got a little bit of wet and dry give it a little clean like that just take the blemishes off i think this is a very very fine wet and dry i think it's about 1500 2000 grit so it's going to take hardly anything off all i've done is just taken a very very fine clean on it we'll give it a blow down with the airline being very careful because brake dust is not good for you. You should be wearing a mask. Right. What we need to do now, we've released, obviously released the cap for the uh, top-up cylinder for the brake fluid. We need to push these pistons back. Now, if I remember rightly, oh, while we're here, we're also checking for leaks. Now, as you can see in there, absolutely bind dry. Inside, inside here, Inside the actual brake caliper is an O-ring, um, which these pistons slide in and out, in and out on. Um, obviously, if we had a leak, we'd have to pop these pistons out. Um, if you touch that front brake while you're now, it will pop these pistons out and you're in a whole lot of hassle because if these pistons pop out, they are really hard to get back in. They have to be put in very true. So don't push these pistons out unless you really, really need to. But what we want to do, we want to do the opposite. We want to push them back. Um, I have got uh, little pot piston cylinder retractors, but I always find it easier just using a simple old G crab. Um, if I remember on here, please bear with me because I'm trying to do this multi handed. What I normally do, let's get one on first. I think we have to use two G cramps on here. I'm just going to get on here. Now, Normally, if I was using doing a car, I'd put a block of wood between this fitting of the G-cramp and the piston. But because the piston is smaller than the fitting on the G-cramp, it's not going to do no damage. But if I remember rightly, I think if I just do one in, the other pot will pop out. So I think, I think I've got to use two G-cramps. Now, this is when it gets a bit fiddly when you're working on your own um, in an ideal world. I could do with another set of hands but hey ho we are in the real world and we're going to try and survive on our own so just bear with me while i try and get these cramps on there's one 
this is really, really fiddly. Now, can you see what I'm actually trying to do here? I'm pushing the pistons in. I do a little bit at a time. Look, can you see? All right, so, because if you use one G cramp, if you just use one, it'll pop the other piston out. Now, as I say, really a two-man job here, but hey-ho, this is the real world on Richard's Home Mechanics. Push one in, push that one in. Wind that in, wind that in. Just having a look, I haven't got no fluid coming out the top, which is good. Right, she's going. A little bit at a time. Because the reason being, if you don't push these pistons in, you will not get your brake pads back in and back on the disc, brake disc. So how simple is that? I say you can get really expensive tools to do it, but we've just devised this. We've got a couple of G cramps here and it's done exactly the same job. In fact, I think these are easier to use. Now, if you can see there, don't have to go mad. <laughs> Let's take these off. Now that was quite hard. Normally in the real world, <laughs> you'd have someone to help you, but everyone's out at the moment. I'm on me bod. I've got no choice but to do it myself. Now, there you go. That's looking good. So you see how the pistons have retracted now ready. Um, what I'm going to go now is I'm going to give this a quick clean, which I don't need to show on video. I'm literally going to get a bit of, um, oh, what have I got, gunk up there. I'm just going to get all this crud off, give it a little wire brush. I've got the little spring bit here to click back in. Then this end will be done. And then what we'll do, we'll turn off, we'll turn to this. We'll give this a clean because these are not, so these little sliders here, these little pins, whatever, are dirty. These need to have uh, copper grease on them. So we'll do this first, which I don't need to show. I'm going to clean that. We'll come back to this, but I will show cleaning this. So we'll be back in a minute. Right, time to reassemble uh, the brake caliper. Now, we've cleaned the brake caliper. I've used some gunk or some jizz just to clean it up. Uh, we've pushed the pistons back. We've cleaned inside the little holes there in the brake calibers. Um, she's good to go. Now inside here is a little clip, anti-vibration clip. Can you see it? That goes inside and sits at the bottom of the brake caliper. It can only go in one way. There is two little clips there. Uh, one and two. That sits in the bottom. There's a little ridge there, two little holes. That sits in there like so. Right, next thing is, do you remember the little slider that was stuck inside, do you remember that was stuck inside the brake caliper? Now again, a little bit of wet and dry, cleaned it up, make sure the wet and dry is gone. Bit of copper grease helps it lube. Um, in case you didn't know, not teaching you to suck eggs, but copper grease is used on the brakes or anywhere you need lubrication that runs at a high temperature, because it's got a very, um, high temperature melting point so that will stay like a grease even though the brakes get very hot that will still act like a grease and won't melt now this was stuck before so let's have a look right i'm going to push that home oh that sounds better now i couldn't get that out before let's just give it a little movement there you go that's coming out that's going in that's coming out Right, we're happy with that. That's nicely lubed. Brake pads next. Again, put a little bit of copper grease just on the back. Don't have to go mad. And on where it sits on the pivot. That sits like that. Sits in there like that. See that? sits on there there's a little bit that sits round it's a bit awkward for me to show at the same time because the brake pad will fall out but I need to keep that um, the other brake pad is here somewhere Ugh. the other brake pad can only go in one way there's a little lip that it sits on that sits in there like so dee, 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 dee. oops hang on a minute Turn that round. Bear with me. Ooh, really, really awkward. Sometimes when you're on your own. Put that brake back pad in. What it is, I'm trying to show you, and I can't take tip the brake pad over, but I'll put this in as it goes, like so. Uh, here we go. Open on there. Right, let's get that in. 
that sits in there like so. There's one, let's get that one in again. That pivots. Here we go. Yep, she's on. Right, they're in. Now, a little bit fiddly that, but it's doable. Can you see how the brake pads are gone? I had to do it that way because I couldn't show they were falling out. See that pad goes in there, sits around there. That can only go one way. And inside there, got a little clip there. Holds that. Now if you remember rightly, these were held in place by this little pin which was also stuck. We've also put some copper grease in there to hold it. So that just slides through the holes like so. That one there. And that one there. Does up like that. Just making sure the brake pads are good. What you're doing, it just makes sure they don't slip out of position. That's it. Just gonna leave that in there for a minute. Right, we need to nip this up. Somewhere there. Now I'll hold the brake pads in. Not too fast doing that tight. We'll do that once that's on the bike. Right. Oh, that is <coughs> the brake pads in. We're just going to open them up a little bit. Like that. Now can you see the reason, the importance of pushing them pistons back? If you didn't push them pistons back, you'd never get these brake pads on. Right, let's offer this back onto the bike. Like so. Right, hold that there for a minute. A little bit of copper grease. The reason I'm using copper grease on the bolts, this area down here gets quite wet and corroded as we know. It just makes it a little bit easier. If these, when these brakes need to come off for me or the next person who is going to service it. There's one there. One there. Now you will have a noise. That's a new pads wearing in. Right, we need to nip this up. See? It's not quite gone in that one. Not quite gone in. Let's have another look. Dee, 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 dee. Open that up. There you go. That hasn't quite gone in. I think that's it. That's better. I think that's got it. Again, it's a little bit fiddly. Once it's going, we can feel that's home. Right, snip these up. Don't have to be majorly tight. Hence why I'm using a little ratchet. Doesn't need to be majorly tight. If it did, I'd be using the bigger ones. Snip them up. And remembering, we're gonna nip that little one up there. If we can find the socket again, here she is. There you go. Well, that noise you can hear is just the new brake pads wearing in. Now, do you not think that's a bit easier? Compared to when we started, that's a bit more freewheeling now. So what we'll do, um, next stage, I'm going to go and put the, the cap back on the top, on the reservoir, pump the brakes and see how we go from there and see if we've actually solved this sticking brake.
Well, I just want to do a quick mention here. Um, we've just put the cap back on. Now, if anyone works on motorcycles, they'll know what a pain in the butt it is to get these screws off. Do yourself a favour and go online on eBay and buy yourself some stainless steel Allen key screws. They will never rust in and you can get them out. The old screws used to get stuck and you used to have to chisel them out. So anyway, that's a little tip there. If you've got an old bike like this, change the, the old uh, Phillips screws or the old Japanese screw heads and put a couple of um, Allen screws in there. You'll, you'll thank me later on. Okay, we've done it all. Let's give the old wheel a spin. Now bear in mind, these are new um, brake pads and they are gonna be quite tight on this wheel, but before, we couldn't hardly move this wheel. So let's give it a spin after changing the pads and basically giving the little caliper a little bit of a service. That wheel, that's running a lot better. That wheel wear in as I drive down the road after a few miles, that'll free up guarantee you that that will come good i think that's job done on that wheel there you go then another episode of richard's home mechanics working on my own personal honda cbf 125 getting the brake caliber done thank you for watching and i'll see you next time on richard's home mechanics goodbye for now